Hello there friends and welcome. It has been a while since my last Pathfinder build guides. Honestly, I'm basically waiting for the Enhanced Edition to come at the end of this month. But there's a certain build that I really wanted to get done with. And it is my Cleric Angel Guide. I've received a lot of requests in the past for a Cleric Guide, you know. Cleric Angels are just as powerful as Oracle Angels, except they excel at a different area when it comes to increasing the power of your party members through their very unique domain abilities. Besides that, as an Angel Cleric, you'll have a very easy and very fun time while attacking in melee range and of course, casting the super overpowered Angel spells. So let's get right into it. Alright, so first let us get into Cleric and of course the best archetypes. But before that, I actually want to cover why pick Cleric Angel instead of Angel Oracle which I've covered before in my previous Angel Guide. So clerics have basically two main advantages over Oracle. The first is domains. You can get many domains in Wrath of the Righteous, and some of them, such as Animal, Community, Madness, and Nobility, have abilities that highly enhance the power of all of your party members that you cannot really find anywhere else. With domains, you can, for example, increase the attack bonus of your whole party by more than 20 whole points. Second, clerics actually now have faster spellcasting progression for their normal divine spells when merged with Angel than Oracle. That's right, merged spontaneous casters only get an increase in spellcasting when it comes to the mythic spells, no longer their normal spells. Meanwhile, prepared casters like cleric get the increased spellcasting speed to both normal spells and mythic spells. So with that out of the way, let's now focus into each cleric archetype, I'll be blunt, like the best ones are basically Crusader and Ecclesiastheurge. The other ones aren't really worth it, not at all. Some might enjoy Herald Caller for the extra boost your summons get. The thing is, you know, it's basically just free feats that you could get to normal progression, and summons in Wrath don't tend to scale quite well with how OP the demon enemies become eventually. Anyways, when it comes to Crusader, you basically lose a single domain, something that to me at least is pretty annoying, because like I said, domains are all the rage. And to overcome this, you basically have to spend a mythic ability by getting impossible domain. Which can be annoying because we are somewhat starved mythic abilities wise, there's a lot of powerful stuff there to get as a cleric, especially an angel. For another downside, they have one less spell slot per level than a normal cleric. The thing is, this can be easily bypassed by supercharging our spell progression through the merge with the angel mythic. Now here's their main advantage, they basically gain 5 bonus feats spread throughout the levels here. The feat selection is somewhat limited, which is a bit of a downer in my opinion, but they can actually get fighter specific feats like greater weapon focus and weapon specialization. So you're kinda like a mini fighter cleric. For the other great archetype we have Ecclesiastheurge, which is actually Tristian's archetype from Pathfinder Kingmaker. The downside is you cannot use light or medium armor, can still wear ropes though. You still have the same two domains as a normal cleric, but on the other hand you gain the bond that holds the symbol property to restore an extra spell per day, which can help you know when it comes to the powerful angel spells you are getting later on. The blessing of the faithful buff, something that can become quite powerful because of the plus two sacred to basically everything that matters besides damage, especially now that Guarded Hearth is no longer a sacred bonus. And their most important ability is probably Domain Mastery. So by default, each domain a cleric has will grant them new spells for every single spell level. However, normally you only have a single domain slot per level. So for example, Air gives Shocking Grasp as a level 1 domain spell. Even though we eventually have 4 slots for level 1, much higher with Angel like 10+, we would only be able to slot a single one of these with Shocking Grasp, our domain spell. Ecclesiastheurges, however, can choose one of their domains and then prepare any slot they have with a domain spell. I'll be blunt, this doesn't really matter that much in the long run because, you know, the mythic spells are the ones that really matter and the ones that will be spamming the most. But hey, it's a bonus and like I said, it's not like Ecclesiastheurge Urge has any really important downside. Because as far as armor, you can just use a reach weapon to attack safely behind your tanks or mount your pet, which we'll soon get anyways. So overall, the choices between Crusader and Ecclesiastheurge, Urge, I actually prefer Ecclesiastheurge Urge because of the extra domain. I really don't want to bother having to waste 
a mythic ability for something that I could already have at level 1 through normal progression. So Iglesita Urge is the build I'll be picking. Now if there's, you know, requests for a Crusader build, then I'll definitely post one in the future as well. For race, I strongly recommend you pick human, as always, but in the case of cleric, it's even more important because, well, clerics are somewhat starved for feats, especially early game, so the extra feat you get as a human will really matter a lot. For background, you have two choices. You can go with the usual street urchin and then pickpocket, for the plus two bonus to initiative rolls, the faster you can act, the faster you can attack or spam your angel spells, but you can also pick oblate and then acolyte, if you want your main character to have the persuasion skill for dialogue checks, because this will make your wisdom modifier be used instead of charisma, and we are a high wisdom character. Because I just leave persuasion to other characters, I'd much rather go with street urchin and pickpocket. Now as far as ability points allocation, here's how it goes. Wisdom is your most important stat, we truly really want to start with 19. Some of our domain powers are very tied to wisdom. 14th strength, so we can also melee reliably, and like I said before, don't think that just because we only have 14 strength, we won't become a complete monster at melee combat. With Angel Cleric, everything is possible, both high power with spellcasting and also melee. 12 dexterity is enough, just to empower our attacks of opportunity a bit, and 14 constitution for a nice layer of hit points. Now you might be asking about charisma, honestly, it's not really that important for a Cleric. Your channel positive energy ability for healing is only really going to be that useful at the early levels, and at most you lose like one or two uses. Regardless, you have other healing powers through, for example, Community Domain, which we'll get at level 1. But if you want some charisma, you can always dump Intelligence, which doesn't really matter for us. So the choice is up to you. As far as skill points, the most important one is Lore Religion, since we are a Wisdom character. You can also go with Perception, even though it is not a class skill, as we have High Wisdom. Persuasion, only if you went with the Acolyte and Oblate background. And the rest of the points, well, they're going to depend on what skills your party members are going to cover. You can even pick Lore Nature, because Animal Domain will give us class skills in this. Alright, so when it comes to your level 1 feats, Martial Weapons Proficiency is a must if you want to actually melee with your Cleric, because by default, Ecclesite Urges have pretty crappy weapon proficiencies. With Martials, you'll be able to at the very least to keep a Glaive early on, which is a reach weapon, so even if you don't have any armor, it won't matter because you will be away from danger. Second, Combat Reflexes. This build doesn't really have the space for the Cleave Feet line, so even though we only have a single attack at level 1, with Combat Reflexes we can gain more to attacks of opportunity. For example, if the enemy attempts to move past our character, even if we are flat-footed. Deity Selection is very important for a Cleric, and I'll be blunt, the best one is by far Erastil. He has the best domains overall. So pick positive channel energy here, and here we are, the domain selection. Erastil is unique in that he's the only god with both animal, for the pet, at level 4 on Mars. And if you watch some of my videos, then you already know that pets are super powerful in Wrath of the Righteous. And then the ever so infamous community domain. This gives not only a scanning heal with multiple users per day, something quite rare in the game, through calming touch, it even restores fatigue, shaken and sickened, with uses 3 plus your wisdom modifier. But of course, the guarded hearth domain superpower which highly increases both the saving throw and the attack bonus of all your party members, perfect for bosses, especially on hard and unfair. It is true that the bonus was nerfed from sacred to competence and resistance, but trust me, this is still very powerful. When it comes to alignment, either lawful good or neutral good as you're going with angel. For level 3, this is when I would pick weapon focus, and you actually have three different weapon choices, falchion, scimitar, or rapier. These three weapons all have the same OP critical range of 15 to 20 when considering improved critical. Overall, I think scimitar is the best because you do find quite a lot of powerful scimitars and you can two-hand scimitars for a boost to damage, even if they are by default one-handed weapons. Remember that I already have a guide with the best ones you can check here. Now, just be aware that early on, I prefer to equip glaives for the reach property so we can attack behind our allies. This matters because, well, we are a low armor class character early on. The only reason I'm picking Weapon of Focus so early in another weapon is that we are somewhat tight when it comes to Cleric Feet selection, and I do have to get this now. 
for the synergy with Dazzling Display and Shattered Defenses later on. At level 4, increase Wisdom, which is also what you're going to increase on every other possible level. At level 4, we also get our pet. Now, a lot of pets were recently buffed in the latest Wrath of the Righteous patch. I'm just waiting for the Enhanced Edition to hit, she really really is an updated pet guide, but basically, the pets that have gore, such as the Triceratops and the Boar, are now pretty much at the same tier as the ever so famous dog and wolf pets, because their gore will also auto-trip the enemy, so it's basically a trip for free. Honestly, I'll keep to the dog, trust me when I say he'll really earn the title of man's best friend through the whole game. For level 5, the feat is a given, Boon Companion. Your pet gain to Animal Domain doesn't scale fully to your level without this, and we want our pet to be as OP as possible. For level 7, the choice is also simple, Outflank. This is probably one of the best feats in the entire game, and you absolutely want your entire melee character's pets included to have this. Also a reason we are going with a high critical range weapon for more free attacks. Level 9 is when I would pick Death in Display, if only so we can soon get Shatter Defenses. Very easy to proc with Angel Cleric. For level 11, the choice is pretty simple to improve at critical, and then the weapon you chose, in my case Scimitars. Now our Scimitars have 50 to 20 critical, quite high. For level 13, Shatter Defenses, so our melee attacks can hit the enemy with their flat-footed AC, which tends to be way lower than their normal armor class. Remember, as a merged Angel Cleric, we learn spells so fast that even at this point, we already have the super powerful level 8 buff Frightful Aspect, which automatically shakes enemies around us as an aura, even without a save or spell resistance. Hell, at this point we even have level 9 spells already. For level 15, starting from now, your feats are kinda up to you, in that, well, we already have our core main feats. Power attack is certainly a great choice if you want to melee, and at this point we have more than enough attack bonus boosts to make up for the penalty to hit. The same for level 17 plus, you are somewhat free when it comes to what you want. I suggest getting metamagic and heightened spell, just for more spellbook flexibility, and this can result in more castings of buffs too, even if you don't want to use offensive spells. Trust me, there are a lot of very useful angel spells that you want. But you can also pick something like Improved Initiative, for level 19, well, you can go with another metamagic feat if you prefer. Although, we do have quite a lot of metamagic rods that compensate for basically everything but Heighten. I'll actually pick Improved Initiative here. The enemies at this point have way higher initiative than normal, especially the Demon Lords. As for level 20, your last point in Wisdom, of course. Alright, so now let us talk Mythic Progression for our Angel Cleric, Ecclesity Urge. When it comes to your first ascension, there's basically two choices. Close to the Abyss if you want a more powerful melee angel. I know it's somewhat weird to pick the demon ability as an angel first ascension, but basically it gives you an extra attack per round as a gore. Even though this comes at a penalty, with all of the angel buffs, you can make this into quite a powerful extra free attack per round. Otherwise, if you want to support your party members, go with Instrument of Freedom, the Azata Ascension, to grant holy damage to their attacks. Now, for your first mythic ability, like any merged caster, it's really hard not to make a case for abundant casting. Plus 4 spell slots can make quite a difference. And remember, even if you aren't a spell casting angel, like you don't want to use the offensive spells, as a cleric you still have extremely powerful buffs for your whole party, and the more slots you have, the more party members you can properly buff. For Mythic level 2, extra mythic ability and improved abundant casting, by this level you can already cast level 4 cleric spells and trust me, a lot of the powerful divine buffs are level 4, like freedom of movement and death ward, which don't have mass party wide versions. For Mythic level 3, I would already pick greater abundant casting, because at this point, your cleric angel already has level 7 spells, just at cleric level 10 by the way. And level 7 has one of the most overpowered angel buffs ever, that increases the damage of all party members by a massive amount. Of course you want to pick the mythic spellbook cleric merge here. As for mythic level 4, extra mythic ability, impossible domain, and nobility. So nobility gives the inspiring command power at level 8, which increases the attack rolls, armor class, and skill checks of all your party members, this is a party-wide buff, by plus 2 insight. Insight bonuses are super rare, so this is a must. As for your first Sword of Heaven ability, 
Well, for this guide, I'll keep it simpler because remember, I already have a full angel guide explaining in depth their Sword of Heaven and Halo abilities that you can check linked to the site here or in the video description. So for now, go with Everlasting Flame, if only because otherwise your Sword of Heaven lasts super low. For Mythic level 5, another impossible domain. This time, the Madness domain. So Madness gives you the vision of Madness power. It's basically one of the most overpowered buffs in the game that's quite versatile as well, because it works not only for buffing your allies, but also debuffing the enemy even, without any resistance. So you can buff the attack rolls, saving throws, or skill checks of any ally by half your cleric class level, so a maximum of plus 10, and at this point in the game we already have a hefty amount. On the other hand, you can also use it on the enemy to debuff their attack rolls or saving throws by the same amount, and trust me, reducing the enemies like saving throws by minus 10 is pretty much like changing the difficulty from unfair to core when it comes to instantly killing even the demon lords through death spells. For your improved angelic halo power, piercing rays. For mythic level 6, yet another mythic ability. This is why I said before, we are somewhat starved when it comes to mythic abilities. And then, domain zealot. This lets us cast our domain powers as swift actions so they are instantly cast which does matter when it comes to some powers with low duration, like Visions of Madness, or that take a long time to cast, like Guarded Hearth. For another Sword of Heaven, Abolish Guile. For Mythic level 7, it is only at this point that we finally have some breathing round when it comes to Mythic abilities. But even then, we still have some useful ones. If you want more melee power, go with Ever Ready. Last stand, well, it's really hard to die as an Angel Cleric or Angel Oracle, so... I don't think it's that needed. Enduring spells can also help a lot by making our buffs into 24 hours, but I think at this point it's not going to matter that much. The angel buffs tend to be pretty long lasting and we do have very high caster level to increase their duration anyways. But remember, there are some powerful one round level buffs that you can only turn into 24 hours if you pick enduring and greater enduring. Like Eagle Soul, Sun Form and the special angel prayer spell, so you know the choice will be up to you. Because I already went with the Enduring spells as my Angel Oracle, I'll go for more melee power now and pick Ever Ready. For another Angelic Halo power, Solar Winds. This is pretty much the only ability in the whole game that gives resistance to unholy, holy and divine damage. For Mythic level 8, this is when I would get Improved Mythic Critical and Scimitar. I know it's kinda late, but the other powers are really useful too. I suppose you could pick this early if you prefer, instead of another domain power. It's just that overall this is just for your character while the domain powers boost your whole party. The same for the abundant casting line. For another Sword of Heaven, Speed of Light no doubt, because of the extra 2 additional attacks. And the Quicken spell for free for level 7 and lower spells. For Mythic level 8, I like Mythical Beast because, well, our pet is super powerful. But there's nothing stopping you from picking this before too. It's just that I find it really hard to justify losing one of these slots. Your other Halo ability isn't really that useful. I would go with Flame of Life. Now for Mythic rank 10, Mythic Power Attack if you want to truly maximize your melee damage. But well, at this point, like you already have super powerful damage anyways. And you can even pick another Mythic ability and like Elemental Barrage or Mythic Charge. For the last Greatest Sword of Heaven, Overwhelming Flames can be quite powerful for a more melee-focused Angel Cleric. Alright, so with building out of the way, let's now talk about the best gear for our Ecclesite Urge Cleric Angel. When it comes to Amulet, Valaxia's Magnifying Amulet is pretty much always the best for any player character. For the armor slot, Ecclesite Urges really can't wear any armor at all, not even Haramakis, otherwise you'll be blocked from casting spells. So well, that's a pass. As far as the robes, the Robe of Unspeakable Truth can be quite powerful when combined with the Glasses of Undeniable Truth, because this will grant you a plus 2 competence bonus to wisdom, extremely rare, and even to intelligence as well, which you know for this build doesn't really matter. But if you want to increase your caster level for even higher Bolt and Storm of Justice damage and higher spell duration, go with the Robe of the Seven Sins. For the belt slot, usually belts that increase both your strength and constitution. As far as gloves, Arilus and Broider Red gloves are basically the best overall, due to the rare per street luck bonus to a lot of stuff. But you can also go with something like the Oppressor's gloves, the Dashing Cavalier's gloves early game if you want to mount your pet, and the gloves of Phlebotomy for a bleed effect on critical hits. As far as boots, Ronex Sacrifice, as always, the best by far in the entire game. 
The bonus to dexterity alone is huge, but the stacking haste bonuses also amazing. For the head slot, at the early game had bands of wisdom, of course, but later on had bands of mental perfection, the ultimate one being darkness caress. When it comes to glasses, if you're going with the robe of unspeakable truth, then of course you want the glasses of undeniable truth to actually gain the increase to wisdom and intelligence. Otherwise, if you want to tank, which I wouldn't really recommend, the broken trickster glasses. As far as cloaks, the cloaks of resistance with the highest enchantment value, or the special angel mythic cloak, which actually increases the power of your spells by 4 dice of damage. So if you want truly maximum storm and bolt of justice damage, go with this. As far as rings, the ring of evasion is very helpful overall when it comes to completely avoiding. Reflex damage effects that allow a save for half, with this you just avoid all the damage, and we end up with high reflex eventually. The ring of the guiding star remains useful as well, for the plus 4 bonus to initiative. Now let's talk all about weapons, so for this build I went with scimitars, but remember, you can also go with falchions or rapiers. When it comes to scimitars, the faith bearer is my favorite overall. It has holy, and whenever you confirm a critical hit, pretty easy since we have 15 to 20 range. You make a lore religion check of DC 40, and on a success, all allies nearby are healed for a number of ranks you have in lore religion, so our characters will always be healed by around 20 hit points whenever we make a critical hit. There's plenty of other nice scimitars though, which I have already covered in my best scimitars guide. Unfortunately, Ecclesity Urges cannot really wear any shields. So thanks to no armor and no shield, we could actually get a lot more armor class, I just don't find it needed because, well, we can ride our pet. Who has 79 armor class, a lot higher than we could possibly get. Now for the quick slot, so Greater Quick and Meta Magic Rod, always a must for mass heals and quick and storms of justice. You can also use the old Grimoire for more spells, lots of lower levels. And of course, the Grandmaster's Rod to truly put our Storm of Justice damage to the max. But you can also go with other rods, like, I mean, the latest DLC added a lot. So we have like Greater Persistent Meta Magic Rod, Greater Maximize Meta Magic Rod, just to truly increase your damage. Well, alright, everyone, so this was it for my Angel Cleric Guide. I hope I've managed to properly show you how powerful Angel Cleric can be when it comes to Angel Oracle and overall supporting your party members to the max. Domain powers really make that much of a difference. If you found this guide useful, please remember to like, subscribe and even consider becoming a channel member for some nice support if you can. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.